Good evening. So this particular research paper is called Understanding is Compression, and it's put out by a multiple universities, and it's actually an international paper. It's put out um, by a few different universities in China, as well as the University of Waterloo out of Ontario, Canada. And then it's all authors are given equal credit, and then so all institutions are given equal credit as far as authorship of the paper. And the bottom line is very simplistic that they utilize LLM models in order to uh, solve compression problems. <laughs> and this is a uh, particular topic that I've talked about before on my channel. Uh, this is like uh, often like the most controversial topic that I talk about on my channel, right? So I, I tend to like, uh, first of all, I have a, a few NDAs around compression overall. And then secondarily, just because it's like, um, for whatever reasons, people like uh, hate. Like, there's a certain like small group of people that hate if you like uh, if there are advancements in, in regards towards compression. I don't get it, but like it, it seems to like buzz people anytime that you talk about compression overall. But um, this isn't my paper and my research, right? So here we go. Uh, and then within this, I think they do a great introduction of this. So before the reader starts to read this article, we invite you to reminisce about the everyday experiences. When you see a tiger, didn't you keep it in mind as a large cat? When you see 3.141592, didn't you just note it down as a pi? When you see a bird, didn't you only focus on its unique features like size and color? Yes, you have compressed the data. What makes you achieve this is not an ingeniously designed algorithm, but your understanding. Understanding makes compression, which is the motivation of this paper. Data compression, either lossless or lossy, is an essential technology that underpins modern communication. Particularly lossless compression allows the data to be perfectly reconstructed, which is indispensable for executable programs, text documents, genomics, cryptography, and multimedia archiving or production. I think it's important to stop here and then talk very specifically about this intro sentence because this intro sentence is very important overall. There is a schism within um, the United States, within the West overall, when it comes to exactly what this research paper, what, what this introduction lays out. Like people, uh, there are a, a plethora of people <laughs> that would argue with this introduction and would have problems with this introduction. They would say and cite very specifically that the problem with this introduction is, is that the, uh, it is showing and notating that there's a level of understanding uh, within the models, right? That uh, topic in and of itself brings up uh, a lot of criticism and that's where everyone focuses on um, there's a lot of debate <laughs> around that overall, right? And then the, the reason for that debate is, is, and I understand it, right? Like a lot of people don't want that fundamental argument, the fundamentals of that argument to be true, because if the fundamentals of that argument are true, it ends up being a get out of jail free card for a lot of corporations. <laughs> and then that's kind of how it breaks down, right? And, 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 that argument is true, but like, and there's no refuting that argument overall. Um, but, uh, I like, I didn't make the conditions for all <laughs> that to be true. Uh, and then, so uh, uh, it's all true. Like, I mean, I, I accept every part of that argument as truth and understand every single part of that argument, but, um, the world still exists and goes on. Right. <laughs> and then, so I think within that, that's, the difference that you see uh, between research papers that come out of China and then research papers that come out and like out of the United States, et cetera, is because it's this argument right here, right? Like this differentiation and argument. And this is a hard argument for people to be willing to accept. Like there's, I mean, people just, they don't want to accept this argument and <laughs> what it is overall. <laughs> but I'm pointing it out very specifically within this research paper and within this introduction, right? And then again, like, I mean, just highlighting it and making it fully 100%. Now, like, so this it, it paper is put out by like a bunch of institutions out of China, right? So if this were not like, um, fully approved with regards towards like China's, uh, like what they want 
with regards towards uh, understanding of these things, it wouldn't be out, right? And then they very specifically, and, and for years now, frame it in this context. And it's a very specifically a different framing, right? It's admitting that there's a, that there's an understanding that goes on within these models. And then like understanding is, doesn't mean that it's human reasoning, right? There's a complete difference between human reasoning and what is going on within these models, but it doesn't mean that it's not reasoning and or understanding as we're seeing within this, right? Um, and then so the secondary uh, part of this paper and then what they're able to do is, so they're able to do this across uh, multiple modalities, all modalities, right? So text, image, audio, and video. And that is uh, important to, to note within this as well because uh, there's a lot of, uh, like when it comes to physics overall, when it comes to compression, there's current arguments overall as to like whether or not you could create like a uh, algorithm that could do all of these things that, that could do uh, and work across multi-modalities, multiple modalities. That's a huge thing with regards towards current compression algorithms is that more, more often than not, they only work for one modality, right? And then like, um, could one work uh, and be like one to rule them all for all modalities? And then that's kind of what this does, <laughs> but it's not an algorithm, right? There, uh, it's an architecture, and then so they architecture, they create, and they label it called LM compress. And then so the architecture of our LM compress first, the original data is transformed into a sequence of tokens. Then this token sequence is fed into a generative large model, which outputs the predictive distribution for each token. Finally, arithmetic coding losslessly compresses the original data based on the predictive distributions. The tokenization module and the generative large model may vary according to the type of the data. But that's all that they're doing, right? Is that they're just using LM models, tokenizing the data, compressing essentially that tokenization, uh, and then uh, having the models output and and predict like the the text, right? And then so within that, what they they go through in their method here, uh, all of it is basically they just train the model enough to understand the. Um, data that and and to understand exactly what goes into this and 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 to understand enough to predict and move forward with these things right and then they give their uh results um here's all of their methodology etc they they break it down um and then there, like, here's the the charts to talk about right so that like this method is is off the charts viable in terms of compression. Um, and then like the thing is, and so I've made previous videos very specifically on LLM model compression. This is a topic that I've covered very specifically on this channel before, right? And I've made notebooks on it and you can link back to those no notebooks and, and um, go through, right? Like, I mean, at this point, I'm honestly not uh, hugely into like uh, uh, doing more work with regards towards like um, compression in the code for this channel. I've done, I think, a, a lot of it already. Um, but so within that um, and, and in that, when I went through, my kind of conclusion is and, and still it was and still is that um, this level, like how you're laying it out and how they're laying it out within this particular paper is uh, sort of cheating it overall, right? I don't think that this is 100% accurate uh, framing as to the level of compression that you're getting within this model because this requires an extreme fine tuning process, right? And extreme fine tuning uh, of the data set and, and, and on the data sets. Um, and then within that, like you're taking like massive amounts of compute, like you're like, so uh, how transformer architectures work overall. And I've stated this before, right? Is it's essentially you're, you're, they work like a credit card system where you like can prepay the compute, right? Like, and, and then, so you take your data sets in this instance, whichever one, like, it doesn't matter what the, um, modality of it is audio video etc and then you train the model on that data set uh, and then you're essentially like prepaying the credit card for that data set is what happens right you you 
get it to understand <laughs> the, the enough of the data set to be able to predict the data set. But you can't just like say like, oh, okay, like um, all of that training was like free or outside of this compression ratio, right? Like, cause that's like within when typically when you're dealing with compression, like every single thing that you do within it is, is measured inside of the compression, right? Like you can't just like cheat math, right? And you can't just say that I'm going to like, uh, you know, throw some math in there because all of your math is, is made up and, and a part of the compression ratio, right? And so I look at it kind of like the same thing. Like uh, you can't just cheat compute, right? Like, eh, like that compute happened before the compression. It's like, well, like, I mean, like it's still a part of the overall equation. It's the same thing as math, right? You can't just like, eh, that math happened before the, the compression. You still have to account for it in your compression ratio. And so I think you still have to account for the compute in your compression ratio. That's just my opinion on these things. And then so why I don't like why I'm not as big uh, on this. That's my knock overall on this, right? Like, like not like, like, uh, I think that this is a little bit of cheating with regards towards uh, what this does and, and how it works overall, but it does work overall. Right. And then, so, um, this is a uh, reason why I'm pointing it out is this is once again, <laughs> stuff, research that I've talked about on this channel, um, that is, um, backed up again and, and, uh, multiple, like a multitude and a plethora of universities here. Um, and then you take your pick understanding is compression. I'll leave the link to, uh, this particular research paper. And if you like this type of content, please like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.